chapter 20 of the book of Shemot, verse 4. You're not allowed to make an image or, or a picture of any of anything that is in the heavens above or in the earth below that is in the water underneath the earth. Rashi says a pesel is al shem shenifsal, something sculpted. Tumunah is tumunah is called avar sheber shemayim. You can't make a picture of anything in the heavens. Uh, she says nothing. Um, okay, verse five. Lo tishtachavel ahem lo tavdeim. Do not bow down to them. Do not worship them. Ki anochi Hashem okecha elkana. I am a zealous God. Tokeda vona vos al banim al shiloshim v'aribe emusonai. Because I am a zealous God remembers the sins of the fathers and the children for three and four generations for those who hate me. Uh, she says, what does it mean a zealous God? Zealous to punish. I don't bypass my strict judgments. If you, if you violate idolatry, I'm not going to forgive you. Okay. With Sonai, Rashi says, Kitar Gumo, like Unkos translates it, which remembers, what does Unkos say? Unkos says, Al Banin Miradin, Al Dor at least, Valdor V with Sonai, Kamishalam Banai Lamechte Basar Avason. So, for those who hate me, when the sons continue the sins of the fathers, that's what Unkos says. Unkos says it means, that when do I punish the sins of the parents upon the father, uh, of the of sins of the fathers on the sons? When the sons continue the actions of the parents, then I'll punish them. When they hold the deeds of their fathers in their hands, and he guards kindness, he pays the reward until 2,000 generations. Besides Yoruvam, do we have another example of this kind of anger or, or wrath? That his son also died and, and, and anybody who followed him afterwards? Hmm. Yes, we just have to think. I'm just missing it right now, but there are examples, I think. We have to find them. Well, let's see. The Rashi says, said, he creates kindness. She Adam payam door. A person creates kindness that a person does to pay reward for 2,000 generations. So if you're if you do something bad, you're punished for you're punished for three generations, but if you do the reward, you're you're rewarded for two thousand. Nim says me the toba is zero me the paranios, and we it's it turns out that the reward for good is greater than the reward for the punishment. Achas al chamesh meos one on five hundred chazu arba doros vizu al payim for what the punishment is for four generations and the reward is for two thousand. He does kindness for thousands of generations to those who love me and guard my commandments. Verse 7 Do not take God's name in vain. For Hashem will not absolve anybody who takes his name in vain. Rashi says, Lashav, for no reason. Don't take God's name for no reason. What's an oath in vain? He swears. 
saying about something that's known, which is obviously not true. He says, Amucho Evan He swears about a pillar of a stone pillar that it's gold. That's called the Shvua Shav. Okay. Now we go up to the Shabbos. Verse 8. Remember the Shabbos and keep it holy. Rashi says, Zachor Vashamor Remember and guard were said at the in one statement. Oh, he finished the water, Kobe? Yeah. Good job, Kobe. Thank you. And uh, Moshe brought you uh, a hummus right here. Thank you, Kobe. I really appreciate your help. Of course. Very big help. Thank you. Just want to say for the record, for the YouTube audience, that I did write a, a letter to Moshe's, to Kobe's principal, and then he never even responded, asking why I have not been yet informally. Uh, really, that's, that's what? Very nice letter. Yeah, I wrote a very nice letter. Thank you. Beautiful letter. Yeah. Saying, you know, the student has concerns about anti-Semitism. They invited me to come and speak. And, and nothing is, uh, we're getting stonewalled at every opportunity. I'm going to keep uh, pushing till the principal gets back to me. My next step will be, I'll take it to TikTok. Oh, yeah. And that'll be like, hey, uh, by the way, if I if I go on, I guarantee this will go famous. If I put that letter on uh on my uh, Twitter, and I say, this is the letter I wrote to the principal of Northwood High School. He never even responded. Please share it. Hey, Northwood, what do you have to do? Do they have a Twitter account? Um, They might. I might. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not on Twitter. Well, if so. they, if we'll give him. We'll give him till the end of the week. If he doesn't respond by next week, no, no, he's gonna respond. We'll oh, put on the Twitter. Oh, you're saying he's a responder? Oh, he's gonna respond. He just, he just doesn't respond to like a day. the next day. Yeah. Okay. Back to the Shabbos. Remember yeah. the we're at chapter twenty, verse eight. What page is it, Moshe? Uh, seven something. Okay. Wow. Oh, that's that's just that's amazing. Seven, I'm at three ninety. <laughs> that's not even close. Three something. Or something. <laughs> Moshe. Uh, seven something, I already know. Chapter <laughs> No, that's the other book. That's the other book. Yeah. Chapter, no, no, chapter, <laughs> chapter, chapter 20. Chapter 20. <laughs> chapter 20 of the book of Exodus, verse 8. Oh, you're not even close, man. Okay. If you, if you don't if you don't get the page in like a minute, uh, let me know and I'll help you. All right. So he says, Zohar Siyom HaShabbos HaKadosh. Remember the Shabbos to keep it holy. But in the second version of the Ten Commandments, it says, guard the Shabbos. Here, let me give it here, man. Give it here. Oh, I'm in Genesis? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That's definitely Exodus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Leviticus. Yeah, no, 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 no. Most All right, enough of this. It's right here. It's right here. <laughs> it's right here. You, you had the place. The that, marker was there. That's, that's why I said three, not... Okay, he's yeah. That's 700. My, my book was... What page is it? Tell me how it's told me what page it is. 394. 394. Okay, so Zachar was In this version of the Ten Commandments, in the first version, it says, remember the Shabbos. In the second version, it says, guard the Shabbos. So, so the chen lechalala almost you must. So, to the one who desecrates it is put to death. Meaning to say, uh, that, excuse me, Zachar Shamar Bedibar Both versions were said at the same time. Also, it says, it, Another ver version that was said that same time was, it says, Michalel Mosimas, those who desecrate it will be put to death. And it says, On Shabbos, you should have two lambs. And And God said, One, what I heard is two, meaning to say, What's the what's the deeper message here? It's actually a very deep message in this Rashi. The very deep message of this Rashi of of Zachar Hashem or Dibarachad is that there are two aspects to serving God, and both of them are important. And the two aspects, Moshe, are the negative and the positive. That they're for Shabbos, they're all the things we're not allowed to do. But at the same time, God is telling us these are the things you have to do. You have to. Guard and remember, guard and remember, two aspects of the Shabbos. Two, and it's not just the Shabbos. What? All the other examples are actual yeah, yeah, contradictions. This one uh, isn't a contradiction. 
No, they're not all other examples. Mechalel Mosibas, Biyom HaShabbat Shnei Kvasim. That's not a contradiction. Yes, that, that, that in the Mishkan you, and in the Mikdash you bring sheep. Right, right, right. right, right. That is a contradiction. And... Correct. Correct. The other ones are a contradiction. You don't wear wool and linen and make fringes out of wool and linen. Also, you're not allowed to sleep with your wife's with the brother, the wife of your brother, she's an heir of two, she's never permitted to, except if he dies, then you're required to. So this is the laws. So right, all the other examples are contradictions. Right. So, but, so therefore, remember is a saying to the, the, the positive and Shamor is guarding it. Okay. So fine. All the others were contradictions. Ramban uh, doesn't agree with the idea that um, remember is positive and this negative. Oh, what is Ramban? What are what are you where are you reading from? Oh, beautiful. Tell us what he says. Eitan. Um, he says that um, it's a difference between what women and men are obligated to do revolving around Shabbos. So women are obligated by Torah law to fulfill the commandment of sanctifying the Shabbos day. Um, women, since they are included in safeguarding, are also included in remembering. Uh, Talmud took it for granted that women are obligated to safeguard the Shabbos, uh, for they are obligated to do all negative commandments. But they should not have been obligated to remember the Shabbos. So it's to include women in, the, in that positive so commandment, even though it's time bound. Commandment, it also includes women. Gotcha. No, 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 no. Even though it's not a negative, even though it's a positive commandment, in, I think what he's saying, I haven't, I don't say it, but it sounded to me like what he was saying was, and we, after I say, see, see if this makes sense, normally women are exempt from time-bound positive commandments, but the commandment of Shabbos, the time-bound positive commandments, they're still obligated in it. He says that it is impossible, it is possible in the first and second tablets it was written, remember, but Moses explained orally to the Israelites that safeguard was set along with it, in order to double down on it. Um, yeah, so that is that it sounds like I have to look at the Ramban again carefully. Very nice. Thanks for bringing that in. Beautiful. And, and now it's in Nachmanides. Nachmanides. Okay, so I just opened it then. Yeah. Okay, this is another beautiful Rashi. A lot on this. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Now you have to remember, Rashon Paolhu, it's the Paol form. What does this mean? The new wave was called to me this Yom HaShabbos. Pay attention always to remember the day of Shabbos. Let's say you find an attractive uh, object. What should you do? Rashi well, says it means to guard it for Shabbos. You have to remember, oh, let's say you find a beautiful watch on the street. You say, oh, this watch will be for Shabbos. I mean, I wear this on Shabbos. This will be my garment for Shabbos. Or you should always, everything you, every day of the week, you should be looking forward towards Shabbos. What's the matter? Like your bubblies? Yeah. Like seltzer a lot. Huh? No, this is caffeinated bubbly. Oh. Caffeinated bubbly? I've never heard of this. Yeah. Right. Most people don't, which is probably why they'll cancel it, even though I like it. Okay, Me, next verse, verse 10. Miyom HaShvi. Miyom HaShvi, Shabbat, Hashem Elkecha. The seventh day will be a Shabbat for Hashem, your God. Mo ta'aseh kol macha, do not do any work. Atov v'nchol v'techa. You, your son, your daughter, avdecha v'amastha, your servant, your maid, u'behem techa, v'gercha sherb sherecha. Your animals... And you're the strangers that are in your gates. So who's not who's not allowed to work on Shabbos? Is your ox allowed to work on Shabbos, Kobe? Yes. No. No. We not. just read your ox scanned. It said, "Who is allowed to work on Shabbos? Are your are your servants allowed to work on Shabbos?" No. Correct. Your servants cannot. What about your sons, your daughters? No. Nobody's allowed to work on Shabbos. So what does that mean? Rashi says nothing. Uh, Rashi says. Oh, excuse me, I skipped to Rashi. It says, Six days you shall work, should, six days you shall work, and you should do all your work. 
רש"י says, כדי שתבוא שבס יהיה בעיניך כאילו כל מוחתך עשויה, יש לו תאר, הרח אר מוחך. Not allowed to even think about Shabbos on Shabbos. Can't even think. That's what Rashi says. You can't even think about the Muacha on Shabbos. And when Shabbos comes, don't even think about it. So there's actually a prohibition of thought. It's not just an, it's an improper to actually think about the, the work on Shabbos. You view it, think about it as though it's done. By the way, Rashi says there was somebody who was punished because he went to his fields to check out yeah. the, the, the fence, I think. Was that a baye? I don't remember. I just remember it was on the bottom of Ahmed Awaf, but I don't remember the page. Or I think, I thought it was a baye. Okay, may, maybe. Uh, Might have been Shmuel. But anyway, okay. And you, who's commanding the Mitzvah Shabbos? You, your sons, and your daughters. Elu Ketanim, Oenu El Gedolim. So Rashi asked the question, does this refer to your minor sons or your adult sons? Amar Ta'arei Kvar Muzarim Heim. You could say that, that, that they're already commanded to do this. El Lobo El Lahazir Gedolim Al Shvisa Sakatanim. So the verse is telling us that the adults are supposed to make certain that the minors don't work on Shabbos. Let's say the minor comes, he says, I want to extinguish the fire. You're not allowed to allow him to do it. Because you're required to have your child keep the Shabbos too. That's what in, uh, when, I, when I was raising uh, younger children, some of my friends... They just kept having children so that their children could uh, press the garbage disposal like their two-year-old on Shabbos. Because they needed a Shabbos Jew. Shabbos Jew. A Shabbos Jew. Yeah. A Shabbos Jew. Okay. Because in Israel, you don't have... Like in America, you have Shabbos guys. But in Israel, I guess if you have... You know, you don't have a neighbor you're going to call. Everybody in the towns is everybody... You're living in a town where 100% are Jewish. Very, I don't know, like not too many communities which are mixed Jew and non-Jew. So a lot of some of the people who are very wealthy, they'll have like non-Jewish foreign workers there. But most people, but most of these towns, they don't have a Shabbos guy. So if they want to violate the Shabbos, they need. That's why they keep on having. <laughs> One of my friends recently told me that that they they call all foreign workers Philippine, and so you can have a Russian Philippine or a Moroccan Philippine. Or... <laughs> oh, that's great. That's a great idea. Okay, that's so jingoistic. Beautiful. All right. For six days, Hashem made the heavens and the earth to see and everything that's in it. And God rested on the seventh day. Therefore, Hashem blessed the day of the Shabbos and he made it holy. Uh, she says, God rested on the seventh day. How could God rest on the seventh day? It's as though God wrote about himself uh, uh, rest. To teach us, Means that if God thought it appropriate to rest on Shabbos, how much more so should you? And this teaches us a very important lesson that even if you're a workaholic on Shabbos, you know how to work. God blessed it and sanctified it. Blessed it with the mana by making it double. And that's called the Lechem Mishnah. And he sanctified it. They sanctified it so there's no man on Shabbos. Okay. Beautiful. Those are the laws of Shabbos. Now we're up to the laws of honor your father and mother. Oh, you have to honor your father and your mother. To live a long life. If you, if you honor your father and mother, you'll live a long life on the earth that God, Hashem your God, gives to you. What does it mean? Rashi says, "Im tichabed yarichun yamecha." If you are, if you will honor, you have a long life. Vimlav yikat yiktsirun. Otherwise, you will be shortened. 
She did return no to Rico and Haim Nidrashim. The words of the Torah are just written in a abbreviated form, Mikal Hain Laf. From that positive, you see the negative, Mikal Laf Hain. And from the negative, you see the positive. Okay? Next verse. Lo Tirtach, don't kill. Lo Tinaf, you shall not commit adultery. Lo Tignog, you shall not steal. Don't bear false witness. Okay, what does it mean, do not commit adultery? This refers to, it's prohibited for a man to be with a married woman. Okay, do not steal. This refers to somebody who steals souls. When it says you should not steal, the don't name Mammon. So this refers. All right. So this refers to when it says, do not steal. Here, it doesn't mean don't steal. When it says in Ten Commandments, this is a very important point to remember. Moshe, oh. when it says in the Torah, do not steal, you know what that means? When it, excuse me, when it says Ten Commandments, do not steal, what does it mean, Eitan? It means do not kidnap. Oh. That's all it means. It means do not kidnap. Don't steal. But because lo tignovu begonim mamon, oweinu el is ever going to mamon, oweinu el is going to the How do we know? Maybe it refers to, hello, Larry. How do we know? Maybe it refers to do not steal uh, kidnap, or maybe it refers to not steal money. How do we know which one it is? I'm a tavar while may mean you know you learn out from the context. Ma lo tirza chot enough b'daber b'davar shachayav and all of nisus. But just like the earlier prohibitions were things that were death from the court. Afo tignov b'davar shachayav all of nisus. But in the context is something which you're liable to death. Okay, that's all the Rashi's on the Ten Commandments. Uh, how many letters are there in the Ten Commandments? Did we say on Monday? Do you remember? I actually don't know. 620 <clears throat> is corresponds to the 613 plus the seven rabbinic laws. That's what we said yesterday. Did you know that, Shia? How many letters are there in the Ten Commandments? Letters? 620. 620. What does it correspond to? The 613 mitzvos and the seven rabbinic mitzvos. Seven yeah. rabbinic commandments. Okay. Also... Oh, uh, 14, Otachmo base Reacha, do not covet the house of your friend. Otachmo Ashes Reacha, don't covet the wife of your friend. Don't covet the wife of your friend, not his slave, his maid servant, his ox, his donkey, anything that belongs to your friend. By the way, my grandfather used to say like this. He had his own unusual reading of this Pasuk. You know, I'm going to read it for you. He say he used to say like this: Don't cover your friend's wife and his slave and his maid and his ox and his donkey, because if you want that, you also have to give kolasho You can't just you can't just take the things that part of your friend's life that you like. You don't even know what he's got going on in his life. You just see his car. You don't see that when he goes home, he's got this problem, this problem, this problem. He's got all the people harassing him. He's got uh, nudniks in his life. He's he's. You don't know all that. So therefore, those are the things. You hear that, Larry? Okay. So then it says, Rabbi, uh, Yes. Yeah, you have a question, Rabbi Yosef. Sure. A comment. Since, since Rashi doesn't say what this prohibition is, I just wanted to highlight that uh, I think it's Eben Ezra that says, how can you command somebody what to think? Or what to feel, and and his answer is basically with a parable that uh, a, a peasant will never ever think of of the daughter of the princess heir uh, as his wife, and so so you train yourself to think that there's there's no way that I will ever have my my neighbor's house or w wife or or every everything else that's mentioned in this verse. And and that's how you fulfill this command. So, um, yeah, very nice, very nice, beautiful. Um, 
Beautiful. Okay. Verse 15. So all the people see the see the sounds. And the uh, torches and the flames. It's called Shofar. Oh, Ben, welcome back from California. We got a nice visit. Very nice. Oh, actually, wait. Oh, yeah, we have a minute. That's the sound of the shofar, the Sahara, Shane, and the Smoky Mountains. Vayaro, Aam, and the people saw Vayanu, Vayam Dumi Merchok, and they moved and they stood from far away. What does it mean all the people saw the shofar? There was nobody blind. There was nobody mute. Verse says, Vayanu Koam. All the people answered. Minayin Shloya Bam Cheresh, how do we know? That there was no deaf person, says the verse Vinishma. Everybody could hear. They could see the sounds. They could see that which was audible. They couldn't see in another place. They saw the sounds coming out of God's mouth. Whatever that means, because we can't see God's mouth. But I will say this, and this will close. When I was in uh, Saudi Arabia desert, and we, we stood at the place which was Mount Sinai, and we saw the Midrash says that God held the mountain over their head like a barrel. And we stood there at sunrise, which was the time of the giving of the Torah, and we looked up at this mountain, which we say, we say is Sinai, and there was at the top of the mountain this peak it kind of looked like a barrel, and it was a glorious sight. All right, let's dive in. Mincha. Shkoyach.